wanted to talk for a few minutes on um, proper conclusions. Um, in Acts 15, 18, and I'm going to look at just a few things, extractions from this chapter 15 of Acts, because we can see this is a, a chapter of conclusions. People draw some valid, proper conclusions that... Uh, well, people today have a hard time sometimes drawing to proper conclusions, and I, I want to look at that. And I, I'm going to, my supposition is that their their line of reasoning is flawed. They 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 don't think they they're not thinking along the scriptures. They're not thinking along the lines of what God's doing, and so that's why they can't arrive at proper conclusions. Mm -hmm. Acts fifteen eighteen says, "Known unto God are all His works." From the beginning of the world. Now that's a conclusion. Yeah. This is a conclusion. Uh, the conclusion that comes from the elder James, the brother of Jesus. Now James, as a concluding statement concerning the Gentiles being grafted into the Jewish tree. Remember, he, they, this was a problem. And this was a, to some people, this it looked like a valid problem. It's, how, how are the Gentiles going to come in and not, not be circumcised? Wait a minute. We can't allow this stuff happening. They're not, they're not subject to the law. They're not being told they got to keep the law, and they're not being circumcised. So how can they become a part of our tree, part of our lineage, part of our heritage? You see, that they weren't reasoning right. They, weren't, they didn't, so see, uh, they were helped. God helped them because some of them were, were serious. Some of them, they were just mistaken. So God, God helped them. He didn't just kick them out. He helped them to be able to see things right. We see in uh, the first verse of chapter 15, certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, except you be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. Well, that technically was a lie, wasn't it? Yeah. See, that, that, that isn't what, Paul wasn't telling people that. Barnabas wasn't telling people you got to be circumcised and follow Follow law mode. No, he was talking about believing on Jesus, believing on what God, God had done through Christ. See, that was he, Paul and Barnabas were leading people to a proper conclusion that was like the shortcut. The gospel's like, you want to see what God's doing? Listen to what I'm going to talk about Jesus. And that gets you right on board, right on track, and you get to, to be right, become part of the family of God. Amen. Amen. See, some people, they, they, were, they didn't see it clearly, even though they might have said, I'm a believer, they didn't see it clearly. They didn't see it right. And so they were doing damage. People telling people that you got to work your own righteousness, that's bad. You can't work right enough righteousness to be saved. It can't happen. Well, Paul and Barnabas, they had some heated dispute about it. They just you noticed that they weren't quiet about it. They didn't say, well, you know, they're, they're just wrong. We'll leave them alone. No, they, they had some disputes with them. When they came to Jerusalem, look down at verse 5, the apostles and elders had come together in Jerusalem to address this question. There was a, this had to be addressed. This was being taught to people that you have to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses in order to be saved. Oh, something had to be done about this. There are some things in our, in our um, world today that have to be addressed. You can't just let them go because see, it leads people in the wrong direction. They'll never come to a proper conclusion. If you don't, well, you're not going to do much for the Lord. All right, what was the question? Should the Gentile believers be circumcised and commanded to keep the law of Moses? Now, this, this was a problem. But for skilled people, for people who knew what they were doing, this wasn't as big a problem as the ones who didn't. Now, look down at verse 10. This is, what, this is the conclusion of an apostle. This is one of his conclusions. Now, therefore... Why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? You see, it's a conclusion. They raise it up. Why would you want to do this to the brethren? Lay a yoke on them. We couldn't bear it. Our ancestors couldn't bear it. And now you want to go laying it on these ones who did. They just got free from sin. They were just delivered from sin. And now you're going to lay this burden on their neck. They weren't going to have it. The apostles weren't going to be silent and allow this to happen because they were, they were looking out for their souls. 
they, did, they weren't trying to make friends, so to speak, if you know what I mean. Well, they went there and they, they made their argument. Paul, Barnabas, and Peter, all, all of them testified about, about, it's interesting, they testified about what God had done with them. See, they went out and they had preached the gospel, and so they come back with the testimony. This is what God did. Peter stands up, he says, this is what God did. I preached to the Gentiles. Look at what God did. Now, see, they're, gonna, they're building an argument. How are you going to resist this? If God did this. When they gave their arguments, and I also gave their recommendation that you don't lay this on their neck now. Don't be tempting God. Amen. They held their peace. Something to be said about that, too. See, they knew that it wasn't in their power to change these men's minds. It was in God's power. They made their argument. They testified. And they held their peace. Amen. Then something wonderful happens. Did God raise, did one of them stand up? No, no. God raises up one of the elders in his body. Yeah. He raises up one of the member of the body, stands up. That's what he says. Men and brethren, hearken unto me. See, James is going to get ready to tell him, I've seen it clear now. I know what we should do. The Lord's ministered it to me now. I've seen this clearly like I've never seen it before. Now, I'm going to lead you into this. Simeon had declared how God at first had visited the Gentiles to take them out, of, out of, them, of them a people for his name. He's testified what God's done through his, test, through his preaching. Well, what, we're going to have to ignore that and ignore God and ignore the prophets in order to reject what he said. See, he's not going to let them get away with it. <coughs> faulty reasoning leads you to faulty places. Then he says, what, what they told us also agrees with the words of the prophet. He says, as it's written, now it's a text, an obscure text from Amos. Then he tells them, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Look at what God's done. Isn't this amazing? Isn't this amazing? The Gentiles have been brought in. Now, oh, James sees it clearly. This is what God's doing. Yes. And so he's, he does it. he's not content just to sit by and say, well, I'm just an elder. Do I want to stand up? And how am I going to help these apostles? They just gave this wonderful testimony, but he saw it clearly. Amen. So see, he, he, had, he was equipped then yeah. to stand up and to lead these, these men and he says, known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. See, it was contented that it wasn't, it wasn't up to him to figure it out. God knew what he was doing before he ever made the world. Yeah. This was a state, technically the same promise that he gave to Abraham, wasn't it? Right. All, the, all the nations of the earth will be blessed because of you. You believe God. God knew what he was doing, and he knew how he was going to accomplish it. Now it's just up to men. See, to, to, to seek the Lord, and, and God, God's on the initiative to open things up that he's doing, right? He'll do nothing except to reveal it to his servant, the prophets. But now, you see, in order for you to see it, you have to trust that this is the kind of God you're serving, a God, a God that will open these things up. Well, he's not, James can see it crystal clear, but he's not standing up merely to make peace. He's standing up to glorify God. He's standing up to reveal. See, you see, to, to take the things and put them together. Because he knows that if they can see it, they won't have a problem with it. James isn't going to have a problem with it. He's going to reach a proper conclusion. Is what he says. Every, wherefore my sentence is. He's going to, this is my conclusion. This is what I, I think we ought to do, brethren, that we trouble them not. Trouble not them. Let's don't do this which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them. Ah, listen to what he tells them. Write unto them, abstain from pollution of idols, from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. Now you got idols there, which is the sins of the mind and the heart and the affections. You got to abstain from that. You can't do that and follow Christ. You can't. 
This is not, this is not reasonable to think I could worship something else besides him, besides Christ, and then have Christ's attention or have Christ's blessing or be a part of Christ. He, you can't. This is outlawed. You can't do this. From fornication, these are sins of the body. They're sins that can defile your character. Can't do that. You can't. See, it wasn't a matter of them working this for righteousness. They were going to abstain from it because they were righteous. You see the difference? All right, eating things strangled or eating blood, both of these were outlawed way before the law. This was just something God said, no. Like the eating of the tree of the fruit. No. Don't eat the blood. The life's in the blood. No, you can't do it. Not if you want to be in my favor. So see, they, he, James speaks of four things that technically weren't things that they were going to do to obtain righteousness. They were going to do them because they were in good favor with God, because they were walking with Christ, and they were going to abstain from these things that would get in the way, things that would attempt to steal their heart and their affections away from God. James could see that the life of faith was not after the same manner of the law. It's a different, yeah. this is a different kind of worship. And so, see, he's, he stayed within the boundaries. In other words, he didn't lay on them any more than was necessary. Yeah. See, he, he was very tender, and it was almost as though he was putting himself under that yoke. He said, now, look, this is, you got to do these things. Now, how are you going to get them done? Well, you... You walk by faith. You walk in the spirit. Nobody that's walking by faith and walking in the spirit is going to have a problem with these things. I mean, as far as somebody tells you you can't commit fornication, you say, oh, I want to commit. No, see, that isn't the way it is. Not with people that are walking by faith. Yeah. They can see the sense of it. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. Everyone who's walking by faith and living in the spirit, they have the capacity, and Brother Jonathan talked this morning about capacities. They have the capacity to come to proper conclusions. We should expect to be able to reason right with God. Amen. We got his word. We got his Holy Spirit living in us. So see, don't let, don't become content. And I'm not saying that you are. I'm saying that I've seen in myself almost a thing like, well, I, I almost am afraid to try to understand it because I didn't understand it in the past. Push through the barrier and understand it because you can. You can. Of course, it'll cost you something. It'll cost you all these things you have to abstain from. It's what's going to cost you. There's a price for following Christ, but it's worth it. Every situation that you're going to go through is another opportunity to see God working in it. I, this, is, this is somewhat exciting for me. I, I, I want to live in such a way that I'm pleasing to the Lord and of an advantage to the brethren and not cause offense. Well, how do you do that? Well, you, James just tells you, you just walk, you just live like this. You do it. Now, this is not the American way. I mean, uh, you all know that. If, if, if a council came together today and said, what should the believers do? Would they give you these four things? Or would they give you a bunch of psychological babble? You see my point? He, James saw it. He saw it clearly. And he answered the question. See, it almost likes, it sounds like he didn't even answer the question. <laughs> but he did. Yes, he, did. he did answer the question because he was able to reason properly. And that's, we'll have an opening word of prayer. Amen. Father.